Hello everyone, good evening and a very, very warm welcome on behalf of the Foundation for Universal Responsibility of His Holiness the Dalai Lama. We feel truly, truly grateful and so blessed to have uh, Venerable Geshe Lakdorla join us this evening all the way from Dharamsala. We have just concluded uh, celebrating Losar, which is the Tibetan New Year, and so this feels like a particularly auspicious blessing for our, all of us to come together this evening and receive these very valuable teachings on the Lamrim from a great spiritual teacher. Um, I must share that um, one of the very special and fascinating aspects of Geshe-la's being as a teacher is his ability to translate some very complex and abstract principles into a vocabulary that is accessible and rooted in our everyday lives. And uh, while geshe -la often describes himself as a simple monk who's deeply inward-facing, um, I must share that uh, there are several students and seekers from across the world who follow geshe -la's teachings, benefit from them. And so he truly personifies for us uh, someone who's able to cross borders and boundaries uh, by his being as, as a teacher and as a Buddhist monk. And by way of a formal introduction, I'd like to share a couple of uh, sentences about geshe -la. You'll also find that in the teaching booklet, which has been shared with all of you. Uh, Venerable geshe Lakdorla is a distinguished Buddhist scholar and director of the Library of Tibetan Works and Archives in Dharamshala since 2005. Prior to that, for 16 years, geshe -la served His Holiness the Dalai Lama as his translator and religious assistant, accompanying His Holiness to over 30 countries across the world. Venerable geshe -la has co-translated and co-produced several books by His Holiness. He's particularly special to us as uh, at the foundation because he is the honorable trustee of our foundation and continues to support and guide our work in many profound ways. Geshe-la is also the director of the Central Archives of His Holiness, a member of the advisory board of the Institute of Tibetan Classics in Montreal, Canada, and honorary professor at the University of British Columbia in Canada. So without further ado, geshe -la, thank you ever so much for offering us your precious time and uh, for being willing to offer us these teachings this week. And I invite you to please start the evening for us. Thank you, geshe -la. Good evening. Good evening, I said good evening, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so this is this is our life, you know. We all want to be good. Good evening, good morning, good night, you know. But you will never be good unless you do the good thing. That's the problem. This is, you know, Vishanti Deva, when he wrote this classic book called Entering the Bodhisattva Way of Life, right in the beginning there is a verse where he says, I have nothing to say here which has never been spoken before. Devjur Keban Dala Yume, my style of composition is also not very unique, not special. Therefore, I have no desire, no wish that this book that I'm writing will benefit others. Then he says, however, if some people who are of similar <laughs> status or fate like me, they might here and there get some benefit. So if that is what he says, you know, what about me, you know, thinking that I'll be able to benefit you, that probably is uh, almost an uphill task. Right? However, what he was saying is, not that he has no wish to benefit others, but what he was saying was, the first and foremost thing that you need to do in your life is you must learn to be humble. Jitna uncha ab jane ka sochenge, utna ab girne ka dar hai. 
be it after money, be it after name, be it after fame, you know. This is the law of nature. The higher you climb, the greater is the risk to fall. हम लोग हिंदी में बोलते हैं ना जमीन पे जमीन में जुड़े रहो गेट लिंक टू द ग्राउंड गेट लिंक टू द अर्थ यू सी आई मीन वी डोंट नीड मच टीचिंग जस्ट फ्यू लाइन्स लाइक दिस वन यू सी सो नाउ द की क्वेश्चन इज यस दिस इज वॉट इज सेट बट इन अवर केस एम आई हम्बल एम आई अ डाउन टू अर्थ पर्सन और एम आई अ डुप्लीकेट बोलता कुछ और है करता कुछ और है हाँ हाथी का दांत <laughs> खाने के लिए और दिखाने के लिए और बोलता है ना आई एम सॉरी टू से देट यू नो यू नो वी आर वी आर वी आर इनोसेंट बंच ऑफ पीपल आई एम आई एम इंक्लूडेड विथ यू यू नो सो हम लोग फिसल जाते हैं बार बार ये ये इसलिए मैं बोल रहा है लखों ना चाहने पर भी फिसल जाता है वी कीप ऑन स्लीपिंग डिस्पाइट अवन Wanting not to sleep, despite our wish to climb higher and higher, we sleep. Bolne ke liye to both for for the sake of saying there are so many things. People have been talking for so many hundred thousands of years. Abhi bhi chal raha hai sab kuch bolne wala guru bhi hai. Naam, bahut sara. There are so many people talking, talking, talking everywhere, talking. Lekin prayas karne wala. people who practice what they talk very few it's true that nobody can practice 100% perfect that's true but at least we should make an attempt to practice some of them that will transform your life that will completely change your life if you are thirsty you need to drink water of course not necessarily the whole ocean You can't drink the whole ocean, and there is no need to drink the whole ocean. But you need to drink that amount, that much amount of water, which will quench your thirst. And we are we are failing there also. So, with folded hand, my my request to all of you, who are really like, I first of all I'm grateful that you you are all, you know, important people, must be busy here and there. Although I, this word busy, I'm playing with these days, and telling people it's not important to be busy. It is not important to be busy. What is important is what are you busy about? व्यस्त होना कोई महत्वपूर्ण नहीं है. इस चीज़ में व्यस्त है. In what area are you busy? That's that's the key thing. You see. That's that's the key thing because life is short. Life is very short, very short, and we we have no idea how the life passes away. So therefore, we cannot be busy for stupid things. And this is another important thing, especially in today's world, to be very careful. There, in in Buddhist practice, especially when you want to do one point in meditation, then distraction. is one of the one of the greatest enemy now look at our situation we are so distracted with all this shiny gadgets malls markets these that you are completely all your senses are withdrawn towards all directions khinchtan ho raha hai you are completely pulled towards all sides and it is almost impossible to concentrate that's the situation so because of this prevailing situation unless we make some effort we will not be able to focus not necessarily on buddhist teaching or religious teaching but whatever you want to achieve it is important to focus if you concentrate and focus whether it's a mundane activity super mundane activity you are going to excel in that you are going to achieve much but if you are distracted and then the example is two pointed needle two pointed needle cannot sew the cloth 
So similarly, if your mind is two-pointed or three-pointed, something like that, you are not going to get much and you are not going to get any satisfaction. In order to get satisfaction, a sense of achievement and happiness, you must be good in one thing, whatever it is. Once you do that, that will enable you to achieve much in many other areas. So there are few things that I wanted to tell you right in the beginning. Then also, there are so many areas to talk about, but as I said, talking is not that easy, but not that difficult also. Right? But practice is difficult. But practice is difficult doesn't mean, practice doesn't mean that visualize yourself as being a yellow deity, green deity, think all these tantric deities also there. And I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about simple things. Don't steal. You think, I think I'm not stealing, but because of ignorance, we may end up stealing. Corruption is stealing. Stealing means taking anything that is not given to you, it's stealing. So we have to be very careful about this. If you really want to improve yourself, improve the name of your family, improve your country, your nation, stop corruption, stop stealing. Which has become an epidemic today, unfortunately. Many countries all over the world. But at least in India, we should all make concerted effort to remove this bimari. That's the purpose of listening to the teaching. So that you can change your society. The country is not able to really move forward because the so-called leaders have no love, no compassion for people, all the time playing politics. When I say leader, I'm not pointing to anybody. Any leader, leader of the nation, leader of the community, leader of a small institute. If the leader itself is liar, a thief, a cheater, what will you expect from those below their leadership? We all talk about India becoming great. How will you become India great? Just by making slogans, doing one thing and talking something else? Right? I live in India, therefore I'm talking about India. Otherwise, any country, this is applicable, you see? Right? But how much you want? This is the question. How much you want? There is enough for everybody's need, not enough for everybody's greed. And it is because of this greed that we are destroying the whole planet today. Look at the amount of pollution, water pollution, air pollution. Abhi Dili mein hi dekho udaran, samne hai. This is because we are not ethical. So long as you are able to get some money, you don't care whatever is happening. And through this way, you, you, you think you are clever, but through this way, we are actually moving towards committing a global suicide. Look at the, the situation of the world today, right now. We have over 20,000 atom bombs today. 20,000, I'm saying. How much destruction just one atom bomb can bring about? What are you doing? The Buddhist teaching says you don't have to kill people, they will die. This is called wisdom. So in the same line we can say you don't have to bring problem, everybody has problem. So our task as a good human being as especially as a, if you say you are a religious practitioner, then you should, those things you should practice. Not just going to a temple and then ringing the bell and throwing some flowers and then rest of the day corruption and cheating. If you believe, if you don't believe, it's okay. Then you say, I'm not a believer. 
Even non-believer, you have to have some kind of <laughs> decency. Right? So therefore, one very famous Tibetan teacher, he says, there is nobody who will catch hold of your hand and throw you into heaven. There is nobody who will catch hold of your leg and drag you into hell. Your happiness and your suffering is in your hand. Do not cheat yourself. What else, what else you want? Do not cheat yourself. Of course you will say, oh, what does that mean? I'm not cheating myself. Yes, you are cheating. Because when you are doing those things which you, which you should not be doing and keep, in, keep on doing those things, not doing those things which you should be doing, that is cheating. Right? So therefore, know yourself. Know your strength. Know this precious human life. This human life has, in Buddhism we call it precious human life, right? In Christianity it's called crown of creation. You know? So whatever that, that may be, that may mean, but there's few things, if we focus few things, one thing is certain that we have very special human intelligence, which animals or birds don't have. Sojnika Shakti. Hey, Amarapas. So now it is your responsibility to see you do have that intelligence, but how are you using this intelligence? For making other people's life miserable? Creating suffering upon others? Engaging in division, this community, that community, this religion, their religion? This is all against the law of nature. Law of nature will, I don't know about God and other things, but law of nature. will do the justice. Therefore, in, in Buddhism we call it law of causality, but in order to make other people understand, I call it law of nature. Even some of these people who are like terrorists, criminals, murderers, many leaders in the world who are actually murderers, killers, they will also, after a few years, they will die, law of nature. Hitler also died, Mao Zedong also died, Idi Amin also died, Stalin also died. Law of nature. It's only a matter of a few years. Thikar dega, sida. Us at that time you will repent and regret, but nothing you can do. Aise karke mori jayega. Mene dekha, I've seen this last photo of Mao Zedong, you know. When I heard about Hitler, I heard about Hitler, his last days, how, how, how far the enemies are there. They are one kilometer, two kilometer. Then he shot himself in desperation. That's the result of doing bad things. Right? So therefore it's really important to properly understand law of nature and live in accordance with that. Therefore in Buddhism there's so much talk about karam and fal cause-effect relationship. You can, you can cheat police, you can cheat government, you can cheat other people. Law of nature, no, you can't, never cheat. Whatever you do, good or bad, you leave an imprint on your mind. Just like the song that you record on a cassette. When you record something on the cassette, Having recorded, if you want to see, try to see, you won't see. And you're not being able to see, it doesn't mean it's not there. To make sure that it is there, you put it again back in the tape and play the push button. Then whatever you have recorded, you will hear that. If you recorded singing beautiful song, you will hear a beautiful song and you will be happy. If you recorded yelling and shouting and fighting and cursing, you will hear that and you will be unhappy. Exactly like that. So don't say that 
Nowadays, because the so-called science, and so people think what exists is only what is visible in front of my eye. Asa nahi hai. Even the so-called mind is something that is not visible to all of us. But that doesn't mean the mind is not there. Mind is very much there. Right? So therefore, we should really understand the most important thing is understand yourself, which means understand your mind, how it functions, how it directs your life, how it controls your life, how it brings happiness, how it brings suffering. Understand that. Who is your boss? In your life, who is your boss? Don't say my husband. <laughs> Don't say my wife. <laughs> your boss is your mind, absolutely. How? Because it's the mind which is telling you, do this, don't do this, go there, don't go there. Right now you look well settled, but the mind, I don't know what your mind is saying. Your mind might say, oh, this, this, this so-called Guruji is gossiping, you know, don't, don't waste time, get, get up and go. You will go. It's not Shakti Shali. Mind, mind is the one which will either make your destiny or mar your destiny. And once you know how to properly keep the mind stable and calm, there is only peace and happiness, nothing else. Nobody can shake you. Bar se tufan hai, kya, you know, there, there is water or torrential, you know, rain or uh, wind, whatever, it will not be able to shake you and disturb you once your mind is settled. Once your mind is not settled, then you very become, become very sensitive to small things. Therefore, the Buddha, in one of his Mayana Sutra, he says, don't make your mind like a cotton, piece of cotton or a feather of the bird. Piece of small piece of cotton, if you just throw it, then the wind will take it in all directions. Don't make your mind like that. Apne man ko kabu mein rakho. Give your mind under control. It's your mind. Kisi aur ka nahi. It doesn't belong to anybody else. You are the custodian of that mind. You are custodian of yourself. Right? The, the so-called countless sufferings and problems that we are talking about today is primarily your reaction to things that is happening around you. You cannot change things around you, but how you can react to those things is under your control. What other people are talking about you, singing about you, you can't seal their mouth. Right? But you can close your ears. You can decide not to listen to those. You can decide not to be carried by those gossips. You will be happy. Right? So therefore what I was really saying was one very important feature of human beings is this human intelligence. That has the capacity to see what is good for you in the long run, what is good for others in the long run, what is good today, what is good tomorrow, you know. So analyze, use this human mind and develop a larger perspective, the sameness of everybody. When you don't develop this larger perspective, when you develop narrow-mindedness, then only thing you know is how to divide. Oh, this is not Tibetan, this is not Indian, this is American, this is this, this is black, this is white. This shows the pettiness of the mind, smallness of the mind. Small mind only knows division. A big mind, larger perspective. Larger perspective means when you see the, see, look at this 8 billion human population today. We are same in the sense, counting from today, in the next 100 years, counting from today, all this 8, human, 8 billion human population are dead. There's no division there. Can you refute me? 
यू कैन रिफ्यूट मी बाई सिंग और सब नहीं मरेगा एक दो जिएगा ऐसे हो सकता अदरवाइज यू कॉन्ट रिफ्यूट सो वंस यू अंडरस्टैंड लर्जर परस्पेक्टिव एंड सी द रियलिटी वेर इज दिस रूम फॉर फाइटिंग वेर इज दिस रूम फॉर डिस्क्रिमिनेशन You will only understand. Oh my God! All these people are struggling to get a little bit of peace, a little bit of happiness. So when you see somebody getting a little bit of peace, a little bit of happiness, be happy. Oh, she is happy. He is happy. It's not question whether you know him or her. That's not the question. The question is, my children are happy, almost like parents. You know, my children happy. This is good. When your mind is happy, there's no question of hiding and killing and all these things. All these problems that we have today are be- because of. Lots of people whose minds are unhappy. Unhappy because of negative emotions like greed, anger, jealousy. All this comes because of greed, things like that. So therefore, right in the beginning, as a almost like an introductory talk, what I'm saying is, of course, we'll read the text, which you may understand or not may understand. There will be some technical, you know, jargons also there. But the important thing is. As I said, if you are thirsty, you need to drink water, not necessarily whole ocean. There are so many things which we already know. You already know. I know you are all educated people. You already know. I should not do these things. I should do these things. But the problem is, we are not able to live up to that. I will not do this. You do it. I will do this. You will not do it. We fail there. We fail there. So therefore, I, my 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 appeal to all of you is, I have no private agenda for this. Okay, <laughs> if you become good, I'll be happy. But I have no personal agenda to get anything from you. But I, I am here not to waste your time. Right. Right. So therefore, if you do something as a result of which you are a little bit happier. You will of course be happy. Your family will be happy, and I may not know it, but I will be happy. That's the purpose of this teaching. Otherwise, this is the, the daily ritual. You know, there's somebody is giving talk. You go there, listen. And then somebody else is giving talk. You go there and listen. Ah, acha acha, bhot acha, sika sika, acha sika. Our Dharamsala may be ahi hota. In Dharamsala also it happens. When he sold this Dalai Lama, of course he is such a great teacher. Gives a teaching. Everybody goes there. Then I have this tendency to tease my, you know, uh, cousins and nephews who also go to teaching. How was the teaching? Oh, very good, very good. In what sense? Nothing. As an ayonachi. So the most important thing is before listening to the teaching, as I told you, there are so many things you already know, but you are unable to practice it. Start from there. Start from there. After attending this teaching, I started practicing this. Ye ho na chhi. Because unless you do, nobody will do it for you. Therefore, the Buddha said, "I have shown you the path to liberation. Liberation is up to you." The Buddha never said, "Just have this faith in me, and boom, there will be enlightenment." I'll throw all this multicolored light, and you will all go to heaven. As a kuch nahi bola Buddha Bhagwan ne. Ho bhi nahi sakta. Aaj kal aise bhot kuch bol ke chal raha hai na. Hota nahi hai ye. Things like that doesn't happen. So that, therefore, the Buddha said, the Buddhas do not wash the sins of sentient beings with water. The Buddhas do not remove the sufferings of sentient beings with their hands. The Buddhas cannot transfer their realization into your mind. मेरे पास सारा गुण है आपके थोपरी में डाल दूँगा ऐसा भी नहीं होता है. And then how 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 can the Buddha help? He said the Buddhas can show you the path of the truth. And having shown the path, if you follow the path of the truth, you will get liberated. There's no other possibility. Right? So therefore. At the, at the very beginning, I want to urge you to as much as possible. And the core of your practice is make a promise that I will try to help others as much as possible. 
and if I could not help, I will at least not harm them. I will not cheat them. Dhokha deri nahi karenge hum. Cheat nahi karenge. Wohi hai. Jitna bhi poti par par jag mua pandit hua na koi hai na. Dera akshar prem ka pare to pandit hoi, you know. This is a very famous, you know, line where it says, you know, just by reading volumes and volumes people died. Jag mua mar gaya. Nobody become learned. But if you learn this uh, few words of love, you will get liberated. That's, that's the thing. Don't discriminate. Love others. Respect others. And there is pr plenty of reason to love others. With the realization that they are all going to die. With the realization they all have problems in their life. With the realization, they all want happiness. With this realization, as much as possible, help. Bring more smile on the face of others. Somebody said, when you came into this world, you came crying. You came crying. People received you by clapping their hands. Bacha peda ho gaya, clapping their hands. Because of this, now when you, you live your life in such a way, that when you go, people will cry and you go smiling. Right? With the understanding that the so-called death is only the change of the body. There's no death to the mind. So no need to worry. So these are the things. With this, this kind of understanding, realization, Respect others, help others as much as possible. Don't, don't harm, don't exploit, don't look down on the people. Don't discriminate, don't judge other people. You, you don't know their life, you don't know their emotion, how can you judge others? You know? So those things we must try to do. Then when you start doing this, then you will see how much it's going to benefit others, I don't know, but the benefit that you will get. I mean, look at His Holiness the Dalai Lama. The Tibetans were kicked out from their own country by this guest who was never invited <laughs> because of the coming of uninvited guest. Tibetans with His Holiness kicked out, but His Holiness, not just for the sake of talking, but in terms of his life and practice, he never, never hatched enmity with the Chinese leaders and the Chinese people. As a result, he's so happy. Now he's 88. 88 means very old, actually. But still, almost every day, seeing people, talking to them, inspiring them, smiling, laughing. That's the result of this altruistic attitude, being sincere and good to others. And then there are others who are always talking about myself. A lot of leaders like this who are always talking about how to hang on to the power. And the end result is, they have to build all this bunker after bunker to hide them, you know. They are good in killing other people, but when they, something threatens their life, they have bunkers after bunkers to hide themselves. Full of fear, anxiety. What is the use of such a life? The so-called world leader, killing so many people. Example is there today, right now, what is happening around you. If you look around, what is the use of such a life? That's the thing. So especially India, land of religion, land of many great religions. Most of the great religions born and brought up in India. Christianity is there. Hinduism, of course, is there. Sikh is there. Buddhism is there. Islam is there. They all have been living together harmoniously like brothers and sisters for so many centuries. So this tradition we must keep alive to learn to live together. It's up to you which religion you want to believe. It is up to you which food you want to eat. If I say I like bread, therefore you all must eat bread. And then if some people are eating rice, then if you discriminate and say they are rice eaters, kill them. <laughs> We are bread eaters. 
Spiritually, it is nothing but food for the mind, you know. This is, I mean, I'm a very small person. Maybe I'm trying to talk big. But this is my understanding. And the, if you make this kind of division in fighting, then the very purpose, the very message of religion, whichever religion you belong to, the very purpose of the religion, the very message of the religion is actually defeated. Right? So therefore, therefore, it is extremely, extremely important for all of us while we are alive. How long we are going to live, we don't know. So while you are alive, live your life in such a way that you create peace and happiness in the mind of others, don't disturb them, and create mind, peace and happiness in yourself. That's the purpose of your money also, right? That's the purpose of your name and fame also. I'm not going to name chai, fame chai. I want name, I want fame, I want money. What are you for peace, for happiness. If you are not happy, not peaceful, <laughs> then even if you own the whole world, what is the use? <laughs> All right. Back our lips, yeah. So we'll read the 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 longer version, the the Lamrim, the song of spiritual experience. Song of spiritual experience, condensed points of the stages of the path to enlightenment. Henna title me. Condensed points of the stages of the path to enlightenment. You got it on page six. Songs of spiritual experience. See, look at this title. This is written by a famous teacher called Tsongkhapa. Okay. He really was somebody, non-sectarian, great practitioner, you know. And he really had this, he was not just talking He, you know, whatever he's written is based on his spiritual experience. And he was so confident of his teaching, so happy with his teaching. So this teaching is almost like songs. Songs of spiritual experience. When you really develop this genuine spiritual experience, you will be so full of mirth and happiness and peace, song will automatically come. Those people whose minds are miserable, unhappy, how can they sing? <laughs> I've read a number of texts like that. There was one text at one point it says, now I start dancing, you know. And Milarepa's song of 100,000 songs, who lived naked in the mountains, moving from one place to another, but his inside spiritual experience was so strong that he, was, he, he just this 100,000 songs of Milareva, these are not written, it just came out automatically. Because he's living with the nature. When you talk about living with the nature, it's not restricted. It's open. You live with the air, you live with the, <laughs> or the fall elements. There's no restriction. You're so happy, you're one with the space. The, the result is natural singing. Instead, you, you confine yourself, restrict yourself, and they talk about I, me, and mine. <laughs> You're constricting yourself, restricting yourself. How can you then sing a proper song? Right? Song of spiritual experience. Now, song of this spiritual experience is about what? Condensed points of the stages of the path. Condensed. Condensed means... He has written many versions of the Lamrim stages of the path. The big one, the middle one, the small one, and then the, the other text that we are going to read is the, probably one of the shortest, only two, three pages. This is also a shorter one. Why? Because, because most of us don't have the time and the energy to read big books, especially these days. If, if he's concerned at that time, then imagine today. Today people are saying, oh, it is not consonega. And how many, you know, how long people, this is too long. You know, if you make a documentary, more than 10 pages, they, they say, oh, nobody will listen to it. Nobody will watch it. It's too long. And then we all think it is like that. Huh? Then we make small short clips, thinking that this will put you to enlightenment. 
But anyway, even that time, people's effort and interest are like limited, so therefore he condensed it. Condensed points of the stages of the path to enlightenment. It is called stages of the path to enlightenment. Meaning, if you really want to get, get that enlightenment and achieve Buddhahood, there is no shortcut. There is no push button enlightenment. You are living today in scientific technological you know, age, still there is no push button enlightenment. Button Dabaya Urgya, Asani. This is again in accordance with the law of nature. Look at the, how the trees and grasses, they grow, fruits, they grow. Stages. If you try to pull it to get the result, you will destroy it. Now this is also very important because these days, stages may not be able to do it. What do we say? Chalang marda hum log, sab chalang marda aaj gal. Kamar tood jau, gardan tood jau, koi farag nahi, chalang marda hai amne. You never care whether your you know, you know, neck gets broken or back gets broken. You want to do high jump, long jump these days. You don't, nobody wants to go stage by stage. That's the problem. So that is also against the law of nature. In the so-called scientific, you know, technological age, we want to achieve everything quickly, eat quickly, drink quickly, run, run. <laughs> what are you going to achieve by running, 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 never stopping? Sometimes I jokingly say, today's people are follower of Angulimala. Ah. Angulimala. You know Angulimala? Yes. There was a murderer who, because of guided by a wrong teacher, who said that you, you, you murder and kill 1,000 people, then you will achieve certain spiritual realization. So he kept on killing people. 999 he already killed. So he was always running, looking for the next person to be killed, to be killed. Then finally the Buddha intentionally appeared to tame him. And Buddha was intentionally appeared. That morning he could not find anybody. So Buddha intentionally appeared a little bit a distance from him somewhere. Then uh, Buddha was walking slowly. Then Angulimala shouted, Don't you realize who is chasing you? It's the dreadful murderer Angulimala. Stop. Then Buddha turned back, smiled and said, It's not me who is not stopping. <laughs> it is you who is not stopping. We are exactly like that. You should at least have some time to think about the meaning of human life, meaning of peace, meaning of happiness. And the problem is we don't know how to live alone and also don't know how to live with others. This is terrible, right? Either you should be able to live alone, like the great fakirs and saints, you know, in India, they used to do that earlier. Even today there are some, we are unable to do that. Now if you are unable to do that, at least you should know how to live with others, with love, with kindness, with good connection. Now there are people who are suffering from loneliness when they are living amidst a place where there is 20 million population. <laughs> What's happening? So these are all our own doing, our own doing. Right? So therefore, stages of the path. Stages of the path to enlightenment. Push button. So in accordance with the Buddhist process of practice and teaching, first of all, sometimes there is a title called uh, Namo Guru Manju Koshaya, which is not there in this text. I pay homage to Manjushri. And then this verse, first verse is paying homage to Buddha, who is really the source of Lamrim. Now, 
Buddha means one who is completely enlightened. So here it says, your body is created with a billion, billion perfect factors of goodness. The, your body means the body of the Buddha is created from a billion. Billion is just, billion means many, not necessarily one billion. Your body is a result of many perfect goodness. Your speech satisfies the yearnings of countless sentient beings. Your speech satisfies the yearnings of countless sentient beings means when you give a teaching, your, your teaching is only to benefit others, how to liberate them from samsara, how to put them to the state of nirvana, how to put them to the enlightenment, right? So the Buddha's motivation thinking always is, how can I physically, verbally, mentally show myself to bring some happiness and peace to others? Just like kind parents do to their small little child. Yeah. So your speech satisfies the yearnings of countless human beings. Ab idhar hamne bhot sikhna hai. This is the Buddha's body, meaningful to behold. What is what about our body? This is Buddha's speech. What about our speech? Right. So we should follow the Buddha's. We are not Buddha, but follow him and change our speech. Our speech should be like honey, if not at least flower, not like a filth. Abe ande dek nahi sakta aisa nahi bolna. You blind, can't you see? All this, you know, harsh speeches should not be used. And your mind perceives all objects of knowledge exactly as they are. So it is said that Buddha possessed omniscient mind, which is not easy to understand for us, because we judge omniscient mind with our limited yardstick. We may not be able to understand, but here what is important is to understand that Buddha's, Buddha's mind knows what to adopt and what to discard. What must be adopted and what, what must be discarded. Buddha knows that, and we don't know that. That's the difference. I bow my head to you, O chief of the Shakyan, he belongs to the Shakyan clan, so therefore he is uh, the chief of Shakyan clan. I bow my head. I bow my head. I bow head to you because of your physical, verbal, mental qualities, not because you gave me money. Today, if somebody, if there's money is forthcoming, you don't care what is the source. So therefore, from there, here also we should learn to pay respect to those people who are really good, who are honest, not to those who are crooked. Mercedes car may be gumra, fir kya hai, kuch nahi hai. You are the most excellent son, that's all you say, Get check up for the hour. Eight thirty, right? Okay, I, I maybe. Yeah, I'll stop here. Finishing the text is not a problem. So now I invite questions. Not necessarily about this text. Any questions? I'm not saying I have all the answers. But I want to listen to your questions, and then we can all think about the answer. Interaction is more important than just one person talking and talking. <laughs> okay, any questions? Yeah. Yeah, there's one there. Uh, for me, no problem, but uh, there are people who speak only English, so better, better speak in English. First of all, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, this is the first time I've done that. The last time I was in such kind of teaching, it was at uh, IGNC, uh, Indira Gandhi National Center of that's where I did a short course. 
but, but that, not, that's not what I'm here for. Uh, my question is, uh, I mean, I teach English language, uh. I'm a teacher as well. Uh. Um, my question is, why do you think it's so excruciatingly hard for some people, perhaps it was as well for me as well, to get above or get rid of their insecurities, whatever they would be. Usually they know that there's something wrong. So that's the source of insecurity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, it is just so painful for some. Yeah, yeah. Why? Is this like a human nature or is something wrong with them psychologically, mentally or what would you take on that? Thank you. This is called conditioning. Conditioning. We are all conditioned under different circumstances in this life, in previous lives also. So therefore, it's not human nature. If it's human nature, then it should be similar with everybody. It's not same with everybody, right? So different people are conditioned different ways, in this life, in the previous lives. So accordingly, we present ourselves in different forms. But that doesn't mean you cannot change. It may take a little longer time, but things can change. If not this life, next life definitely. So that's why Tibetans sometimes recite mantra in the ears of a dog also. So this, this life, not much possible, but it will leave an imprint so that next time they will be born better. So different techniques must be there. I've myself seen people, as you rightly mentioned, I've myself seen people who had great difficulty in learning anything, but then they make effort, make effort, do prayers, make effort, and after three, four years, they shine out. So usko repeated practice, karne se, then things can change. So, when you say difficulty in learning something, can, can you give, give us an example of what you mean by learning something? Anything. Learning, as he said, English. So, like anything. Buddhism or English. Some people are very sharp. They immediately catch it. Others take a long, long time. Right? And some people, they work very hard, memorize something in the morning, then after lunch, they forget everything. <laughs> like that. So, those things, yeah. Okay. Yeah, please it, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> so just following up on that same mm. uh, idea, there are people who um, may not see the need to change. Oh. Meaning, uh, people I know were very happy with their own life. Yeah. They may not feel that, you know, <laughs> that they need to. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, I know this very well. One time I was giving a talk related to Buddhist concept of suffering, happiness, and things like that in uh, Thomas Martin Monastery in Kentucky. It was an evening talk. The lot of Christians of that Christian monastery came, and some other, you know, people also came. <laughs> there was a young lady sitting in front <laughs> with with very good makeup. <laughs> so she said, "Why are you talking about suffering? I have no suffering." <laughs> I said, "Good luck." <laughs> no, I did not insist. Yes, you have suffering. No, I didn't because she she think he's okay. So I said, "You know, when the cracks are seen here and there in the roof." Better you mend it, pay attention, otherwise it, the roof might fall on you. But you said you have no suffering, so I said, good luck. You are right, there are many people who pretend they, they, everything is okay. Therefore, in, in Tibetan, there is a saying, don't make friendship with okay. <coughs> okay, say, dosti mat karo. Okay, nahi hai. Huh? Don't make friendship with okay. Right? So, 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 therefore, some people, you know, it, again, it's a conditioning, mental attitude. Some people, if you, you, by insisting, they will never learn. If you leave them, sometimes they will pick up better. I remember another story, one American monk, uh, <laughs> in the beginning he was a hippie, actually, 
not interested in Buddhism, anything, but later on he got interested into it and then completely changed and transformed, became a monk, you know, things like that. And uh, he was not in talking terms with his parents in the beginning. Then later on he became a monk and he studied, but he was actually very angry, you know. But gradually, you know, he became completely, you know, completely means a lot of changes there. Then he made more connection with his parents. His parents were happy. They came to Dharamsala to see him, things like that. So before that, one day he said, my parents never show any interest in Buddhism and things like that. What should I do? I said, don't, don't, don't tell them, don't insist. But what you do is you read your Buddhist texts. And every time you read your Buddhist texts, you, sh you show that you're happy, you know. You smile a little bit. Show happy, you know. Then turn the pages. You, know, you, you present yourself as very happy. Then don't ask them to read it. Then leave it, it, leave it there on the chair or somewhere, table somewhere. When you're gone, they'll read it. <laughs> After all, we are a brand of monkey, you know. <laughs> <laughs> This is, the, you know, you, you need to elaborate. We are a little bit like small kids. You know, small kids, if your parents tell them, do this, they will never do. Don't do this, they will do. So we are a bit like that also. Lollipop, bete, lollipop, mat khao. Bolta hai, mama, mujhe lollipop hi chahiye. This is our <laughs> tendency. So you need to be tactful, a little bit tactful. So sometimes, for example, if, if there is a person, your friend who is a uh, smoker, if you say smoking is bad, don't do it, he will not listen to you. But you should also take one puff with him. <laughs> and then lightly, you know, you talk about your experience, things like that. When you become friend, then you can tell a lot of things. And then gradually he can, you can help him give up that habit also. So that's why in Buddhism we talk about skillful means. It's very important, yeah, okay? Yeah. Cycle of birth and rebirth. Yeah. Why do we actually need to get rid of sufferings? I believe sufferings are great teachers and pain is a great educator. Yes. As the fam famous Sufi sage Jalaluddin yeah, yeah. Rumi yeah, yeah. says, in pain is the cure. But why do we all try to get rid of dukha vada and sufferings? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, in Buddhism also we have a teaching, the Shanti Deva's teaching it says suffering is introduction to happiness. In Buddhism also. But that doesn't mean you keep on suffering all the time. <laughs> uh, uh, nobody wants headache. <laughs> it's easy to say that suffering is, you know, introduction to heaven. Therefore I want headache, you know. If you want headache, then hit your head all the time, you know. Nobody will do that. So that means it's only a step for more reliable happiness. So these days I prefer using the word challenges than suffering. It's easier to understand. If we, in life, if we run away from challenges, we will we'll never learn. If you face challenges, you will learn many things. So that's a step to success. That doesn't mean you keep on facing challenges all the time, you know. That way, right? So. Yeah, the, the, the simple answer is we all want happiness, do not want suffering. Suffering can be used, but we don't want suffering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> 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 hmm. It's wonderful to see you after a very long time. Mm. Uh, so, Geshela, as you rightly said, you know that it is the mind mm. which controls ourselves. Mm. So, uh, Geshela, in the mundane life, mm. when we get encountered with several negative emotions, mm. so you know, you know, the one which we have control is over the um, internal. Self, you know, like there are so many external factors which mm. we are, which are in, not in our control, mm. but it is, it is the internal self, uh, internal factors which we can control and stabilize ourselves. Mm. But sometimes, Geshela, you know, the difficulty is sometimes I do have the realization that 
it is my mm -hmm. own internal factors, my own mind, which is creating the uneasiness. Still, you know, I am not able to like uh, help myself, which in process becomes even worse. Mm -hmm. So I just need what yeah, yeah. can I do in this part? Thank you. Number one. <clears throat> We are talking about doing certain practices. We are not saying you are perfect right now. Therefore, you are facing this problem. You are trying, you are not perfect. Therefore, you are facing this problem. But gradually, through your practice, when you become perfect, nobody can harm you. Your mental state will be such that you will not bother what is happening around. Like Milarepa, again, great example. He was going naked. And even his sister, you know, she had difficulty finding him because he's always running away from mountain to mountain, you know, naked completely. And somehow she, one day she was able to catch hold of him and she cried. And he said, what is this way of spiritual practice? Look at other practitioners. Those days there were no cars, no car kit, but at least lamas, great lamas with canopies and, you know, decorations and, you know, horses and horses riding and people are welcoming. Look at them, you know. You just, what kind of practice you are doing? You are even, you even for, forgotten the, the human decency. You are moving naked, shameless. And then Milarepa laughed and said, I'm doing nothing which is against nature. I came, I, I was born naked. I'm not going to say everything <laughs> what he said because we may not be able to digest. <laughs> like that, you see. So what I'm saying is, from this quotation, what I'm saying is, if you are a true practitioner and reach that level, nothing whatsoever will affect you. Bolne those level. If people are saying bad things, say, let them say bad things. If people praise you, you're, you're, not, you're not especially happy. So somebody praises you, therefore Shanti says, if somebody praises you, don't, don't feel too delighted. Instead you should think, this person is a good person, he at least knows what is good, what is bad. Not you. You see? Kuch farag nahi we are making, we, all this, you know, external reactions make difference to us because we are stuck with the other people. We are bothered about what, what, what they will say, what they will do. Therefore, it makes difference for us. But once you reach a stage where what other people do, what other people say doesn't concern you, doesn't concern you, doesn't mean you don't have compassion. You have compassion, but that will not fluctuate your life, your way of thinking. If you are not a thief, even the six, seven, eight billion people says, Geshe Lagdor is a thief, I'm not a thief. Why, why should be, I be worried about it? Things like that. So it, at this stage, of course, we'll be bothered. But gradually, gradually, You reach a stage where people's praises and defamation and all these things will not toss you around. Kuch farag nahi parta. Right now the problem is we are so concerned about. We are basically like cut putli hai am lo. Udar se daga khinj rai ham nach rai ya. Or kuch nahi am lo. Thik na? So that's why the Buddhist teaching is saying don't be a cut putli, don't be a doll you know, whose strings are pulled by other people, and you are dancing and singing at the tune of others. If I wear this, what other people will say? If I put this, what other people will think? Let them think whatever. Really? The thing is, you are doing this, you are happy, you are not harming anybody, do whatever you like, you know. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, sir, for uh -huh. giving at least this opportunity, opportunity uh -huh. to listen.
listen to you. Huh. Sir, uh, uh, I have a question with regards to you are uh, saying that minds will control and guide us. Mm. But at the same time, this is the mind mm. that, that distracts us. Mm. Because this mind has been programmed in a way, in a mm. pity way, mm. in a very mm. narrow mm. way. Mm. And whatever we focus, mm. that will also be in a narrow way. Mm. Because we are doing based on our ritual and habitual. We are doing based on, <coughs> even if we get hungry, that's based on the programming, the rituals that we have already, uh, you know, programmed. And as you mentioned about practitioner, I think that will be the solution. Mm. Or uh, we can also name it reprogramming. Mm. Exactly. Yeah, in order to uh, reach to our full potential, that exactly. is the goal. Exactly. But the point is, when I see, for example, for most of the people, heaven for myself, being a practitioner, is very not affordable. You know, I tried several times to register, for example, uh, and I don't name uh, the organization. They ask much money, which is not affordable. Mm. I think in, in this way, and my question is, if someone is not able to be a practitioner, mm. what is your solution to them? And how you should become a a true practitioner to reach that enline, enlightenment and reprogram himself and use full potential of uh, human being potential. Mm -hmm. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Mm -hmm. So to make a long story short, there is Buddhist explanation, there is scientific explanation. Scientific explanation more or less says it is programmed. Attachment is necessary, anger is necessary, jealousy is necessary for survival. That is what science says. There's nothing called negative emotion. <laughs> They're all necessary. They don't call it positive emotion also, but they say these are all necessary. From there came the expression fight and flight response. Because of these emotions, you're able to fight an enemy for which you need anger. So anger is necessary. If you can't fight, flight, run away. Right? Fight and flight response was there long, long ago when men lived in the cave and lived with wild animals. So this, this expression came down. But now today, I'm sure you're aware, today they are, they are saying fight and flight response is not a good response. Now they're saying it is always better to think a little bit and give the give proper befitting response. And there was also a time when the, the classical physics, they were saying that gradually when you grow older, you will you suffer from old men's disease, old women's disease, suffer from dementia, and nothing can be done. Now today they are saying neuroplasticity. Things are changing. In Buddhism, it has been all along, they, it has been saying that negative emotions can be lessened, removed, positive emotions can be changed, you know. There may be different tendencies, you call it programming, whatever, but if you make the effort, you can change. That's what we already discussed. Right? Right? So therefore, therefore, uh, another question related to this, which many people ask, is that why do we have more predominant presence of negative emotions and less presence of positive emotions? In answer to this also, they say our origin is animal. The function of animal is, the animals are not there to do dharma practice. Animals are there to defend themselves, reproduce, have siblings, children. So that programming from animals still there. This is also said by somebody who, is, who has a good knowledge about Buddhism and good knowledge of science. Then he said, that may be the case, but the good news is if you make an effort, you can come out of this continuity and get enlightened or whatever. Or at least you can use the word, you can become better. So that is there. Therefore, now, to answer part of your question is, 
when you do, which we'll read in the text tomorrow also, when you do practice, it is important to find a reliable teacher, good teacher, like me. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> I'm not pointing towards that, okay? <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm saying is really this is important. Find a reliable teacher who doesn't charge you a lot of money. <laughs> That's what you pointed. For, for running any institution, thing, they may need little money. That is understandable. But if they are charging a lot of money and then saying enlightenment in one week, these people are thinking you are stupid. And you go there, many people go there. Stupid we are. And especially if the, the place is like a little bit, you know, shiny and looks nice and some nicely dressed ladies and men coming there. You go there. Uh, you also, I also belong to this community. Jimmy. <laughs> this is what, <laughs> you don't have money in the pocket, but you want to join this group of glamorous people, that's, that's how you are victimized. Like, for example, this gathering, how much money they charge you? Didn't charge, right? They must, they, at the most, they must have said, if you can make a donation, you can make a donation, something like that, I don't know. But otherwise, you see, so, so therefore, the, my main point is, you should find a good teacher. Good teacher doesn't mean somebody who is famous. Famous or notorious, I don't know. There are many people, sadhus or gurus or whatever, who are kind of kind of famous, meaning they have a lot of money, they have many followers, you know. They'll sit on a very elaborate scene and look there like they're already enlightened, you know. And they ask a few questions, they will they will get angry. Because they don't know. Yes. And for many for many people it's so difficult for you to just to see them. That, that is how it worked in the, in the ancient times also. The gurus were not allowed to be seen easily. They are kept in a far place with a lot of light and shining, and the guru is not giving any teaching, sitting there like... Then these poor, ignorant people watching from a distance, they are humble, thinking, oh, he's the guru. <laughs> Just like the ordinary farmers and peasants, you know, when they see very rich people, they do like, sar, sar, boltan, usidara. This is how human mind works. So we need to change these things, you see. So therefore, therefore, in Buddhism, it, it speaks about four reliances. Reliance company and neighbor, I mean. Four reliances. That means out of the teacher and the teaching, rely more on the teaching than on the teacher. What we do is, oh, he's a very famous teacher. Everybody runs there. Famous, what do you mean by famous? Teaching, listen to the teaching. And if it makes sense, follow. If it doesn't make sense, maybe famous in his own place. Let him become famous. You don't have to go there. And then when you listen to the teaching, pay more attention to the meaning than on the beauty of the words. Words may be very beauty, but it may be empty of meaning. Pay more attention to the meaning. When it comes to understanding the meaning, pay more attention to the definitive meaning than on the interpretative meaning. When it comes to understanding the definitive meaning, pay more attention to the understanding of the wisdom mind than on the grosser level of that. So these are the processes. Right? So therefore, like, it's very important to, especially, Abhi Kali Yuga hai na? Very careful about making friends with people, you know, finding the teacher. Don't, don't just, <coughs> just rush because he looks nice or she looks nice, not like that. Marriage ceremony mein nahi jara ab ya. Thik na? So find a teacher who really, at least, the teacher should have at least two, three qualities. One quality is he should be compassionate. He's not, they are to cheat you, to take your money. Huh? Mumi Ram Bagal Me Churi Esa Nai. Huh? Ram Nam Japana Prai Mal Apna Bolta Na O Wala Nai. O Wala Nai. So, so, just like in any human relationship, you should be very careful, especially your relationship with teacher. 
must be real. Because you, you are supposed to be talking to somebody who will guide you to have happiness, this life, many lives to come. So they are the, the, the teacher should be reliable. Okay? Yeah? I'm talking too much. Speaker. So what are, the first, what are the first few steps that we can take to come to a stage where the mind can stop affecting us and where we are not as, uh, you know, affected by things around us? It's to come to that stage wherein we can tolerate and be tolerant and be more compassionate. Uh -huh. So what can we do? The first thing is, as I said right in the beginning, first thing is you make it very clear that you want long-lasting happiness and peace. The first thing you need to make, as I said right in the beginning, is that I want a long-lasting happiness and peace. Then you should see what circumstances, what emotions, what mind, mental way of thinking is contributing towards that long-lasting peace and happiness. And what are those that is obstructing that peace and happiness? Look at it, be it external people, situation, or your own mind. So there you will find anger, jealousy, hatred, these are all obstructing. So try to listen, listen them. <coughs> Similarly, people also, you know, people who are constantly bothering you, you know, obstructing your happiness and peace, you know, peaceful way of life, distance yourself from them slowly. It's important. So therefore in life, it's important to, to learn to say no politely. Bas both ho gaya. Learn to say no politely. Or distance yourself. Slowly, slowly. That's important. Okay? Okay. Yes, Shula, this one. Um, you were talking about the fact that they're all going to die. So all the bad guys who do all the things that mm. we might be upset about, mm. they're going to die, and that's our consolation in a way. Mm. But in the meantime, mm. they do so much terrible, savage damage to so many people. Mm. And when you see that suffering, mm. and you see them, I mean, as a Buddhist, how do you even begin to view that? It's not like, well, they're going to die someday. But meanwhile, what's happening is so tremendous. True, very true, terrible. very true. So therefore, therefore, <laughs> therefore, Shanti Deva says, if it is something you can change, change it. Don't worry because you can change it. If it is something you can't change it, no use worrying. By worrying, you can't change it. That's the same thing. So with many of these wrongdoers, if it is something that you can do, do it. Something you, something you can do means... Yes, you can do. For example, I'm not, not talking about all the big levels, but in general I'm saying, at least there are many moments where you can practice non-cooperation. Even if you don't have that platform and opportunity, don't have the strength to, honestly, we don't have that in many cases because of distance, because of many things. You know, you can't do, for example, you can't go to Ukraine and fight for somebody else or, you know, <laughs> go to the Middle East and go, many of these things are, you know. So, but at least we can, in general, we can say, say no to war. Whichever country you are living, say no to war. Say no to militarization. Right? So that's why Gandhi's practice of non-cooperation was so important. So, so we need to think, you know, what, what I can do, not only waiting. I'm not saying just wait, <laughs> one day they will die. But what I'm saying is, you know, there's no escape for them also at the end of the day. But I'm not saying that one day they will die, so don't do anything. I'm not saying. I'm not saying that the Chinese leaders one day are going to die, so we'll not do anything for Tibetan struggle. Of course, we are not saying that. We are doing everything possible, meaning that educating our own younger children, 
you know, democratization, so many things we have done, we are doing, right? But then, sometimes even after all this effort, you might think, oh, they are becoming so strong, you know, there's nothing we can do. Then the consolation is, they are also going to die. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, just returning to this question that uh, um, was asked previously, um, you said the four, four reliances and then you said that uh, the definitive uh, rather than the interpretative. Yes. And you also then went on to say the wisdom mind as yeah. opposed to the ordinary mind. Do you think you might be able to expand on that so that, so that we understand? Yeah, when, when, the, when the Buddha gave the teaching, he was giving a teaching for the ben for, to benefit everybody. Now, as we discussed, the mental level, intelligence level of everybody is not same. So, therefore, for some people, if we talk about shunyata or emptiness and other things, they will not be able to grasp or understand it. So, for these people, he said something which they can, at least for the time being, they can say, oh, yes, yes, I understood it. Then, gradually, he will explain that a little bit. So, that level is called interpretative teaching, which may not be definitive, not the final, but in order to help those people on that level, you know, he give those interpretative teaching. And then definitive teaching means, this is the ultimate teaching as it is. Okay? Then in order to understand that definitive teaching, for example, the shunyata, emptiness. Emptiness or shunyata will not be understood by a grosser level of mind. It will be understood by very subtle, focused, discursive visit of mind. That's the meaning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We just have time for one more question. Yeah, she has been raising her hand for a long time, I think. Thank you, Geshela. Yeah. Um, um, I, like, I think in my day-to-day -day, uh, life, and oh. especially with my family, oh. I got late because I got late. Yeah, it's okay, 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 okay. Yeah, everything is okay. Yeah. So in my, uh, with my relationships in the house is where I face constant struggle. Yes. Um. So like you said that you know, uh, if you dress a certain way, then somebody says something. Don't let it affect you. But if it's my mom or my dad, yeah. and they expect me to look a certain way for the society. Yeah. Um, and I see it affecting them. Yeah. I see that they have expectations of me. Yeah. And it is affecting them. How yes. do I go about with that? Yeah. And also that, um, like I'm constantly, I do feel burdened by the sense of responsibility. Um, I would like to live a life which is free of burden. It comes, my actions for my family come out of a sense of love. Yeah. But not from a sense where I feel pressurized. Yeah. But I also face this um, constant dilemma of um, acting out of responsibility, and it, sometimes it conflicts with my own sense of responsibility towards myself. Yes. Yeah. yeah this is the problem with the, not only your family, whole society, <laughs> because every generation thinks they are more clever than the new generation. This has been going on for a long time. Now when you grow up, you will say the same thing to your children. <laughs> right? That's the problem. So one thing you need to understand is that my parents are saying this with full responsibility, full love, maybe out of ignorance. <laughs> but that understanding you have to have. But again, for example, if you are more intelligent, more clever, your parents are not so less, less you know, educated and things like that, then they may be talking about what they have experienced in, the, in those time of agriculture, <laughs> things like that, which may not be relevant. So in which case, you, if possible, you can explain. And still that doesn't work and it's becoming very, very difficult. And then you don't have to live with them. Live separately. That sometimes, you know, absence makes heart grow fonder. Sometimes, you know, familiarity breeds contempt. Aisa hota hai. Aisa hota hai. Thik hai na? So, dur ka rishta bolta hai na? Acha hota hai. In Tibetan also they are saying, 
Lama Chi Lama Jang Ne Chi. The blessing of Lama is greater from a distance. Now, we are sitting here in Dharamsala, Guruji, Dharamsala, Lama, and we are sitting here every day. We are sitting here and we are sitting here and we are sitting here and we are sitting here. तो इतना श्रद्धा हम लोग नहीं होते पास में बैठा है तो दूर से आता है गुरुजी का एक ग्लिम्स होने से गुरुजी तरह लम्बा मिल गया या दिस इज़ ह्यूमन हाउ ह्यूमन माइंड वर्क्स राइट सो देवर यू शुड सी केयरफुल यू डोंट मेक एनी हेस्टी कंक्लुशन बिकॉज़ आई डोंट नो योर होल सिचुएशन यू आर द बेस्ट जज सो दिस इज सम पॉसिबिलिटीज Thank you. Questions. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for taking time out and, so, and also giving us the opportunity to just like be here in Delhi. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a blessing for all of us. Um, and we look forward to seeing all of you for the next four days. Uh, thank you so much. Shubhratri. <laughs> Good night.